Hi, this is Dr. Conrad Miller. I'm here today to talk about the DARK Act, which would outlaw labeling genetically modified foods, which are labeled in 64 countries in the world already, including China. And in poll after poll, greater than 90% of Americans say that they want their genetically modified foods labeled, which means most likely that means you. Nine out of 10 people, in other words, want genetically modified foods labeled. But Congress, with its 11% approval rating in October and 16% approval rating in November in the Gallup poll, wants to pass through a law outlawing labeling genetically modified foods. Introduced by Senator Pat Roberts of Kansas. It just got out of the Senate Agricultural Committee, which he heads. And he says, we have to stop this wrecking ball. Meaning the fact that in July, Vermont is going to have their law go into effect, mandatorily labeling genetically modified foods, and Connecticut and Vermont have all, and, and Maine have also passed similar laws. So they, he calls the act the Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act, which passed as an act in, in the House already. And here's what it does, which sounds kind of crazy. It forbids states from labeling GMO foods or enforcing existing labeling laws passed in Connecticut, Maine, and Vermont. It prohibits, or prohibits any state or local county or city oversight of GMO crops, even when the federal government has declined or failed to regulate them. It will weaken already impotent federal regulations on GMO crops at the United States Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration. And it will allow GMOs or genetically altered foods or products to be labeled as natural. So we should know that Arpad Pustai, who was the head of uh, this research project on genetically modified foods at the Rowett Institute in Scotland, was concerned about problems with the immune system being ill affected when eating genetically modified foods. And we also know that rats fed genetically modified potatoes develop smaller brains, testicles, and livers as compared to the control rats who ate the potatoes from the parent line, which was not altered, of the same potatoes. And recently, the study by V.A. Shiva Ayadurai, who invented email, he did a study uh, published in July 2015, reviewing over 11,000 other studies. And he found that the GMO soy that he, te he was testing and reviewing had very uh, higher level, much higher levels of formaldehyde and depleted levels of glutathione. So formaldehyde is what we preserve brains in, it's in embalming fluid, newsprint, uh, it's in wet strength resin that goes into your paper towels and your facial tissues and your table napkins. It's in dish liquid, polyester, trailers, particle board, uh, and it's a class one carcinogen. And remember this, for you mothers out there, you're feeding your baby soy milk. Soy milk in the United States comes from genetically modified soy, 94% of the soy in the United States is genetically modified, at least. So you're feeding your babies this soy, I hate to tell you this, and this is what they're finding that has formaldehyde in it that's a carcinogen. So that's not very good. And also, the, the glutathione is depleted, that's something that helps we, us recover and detoxify ourselves. And as we get older, the levels drop in our body and now if we we're eating genetically modified food, then these, we're not getting enough glutathione once we get toxic loads in our body to try to recover. This is a way to mark genetically modified foods. And now we know that genetically modified soy, for example, has higher formaldehyde and lower, lower glutathione than it should have as compared to the other soy. And all these products, these GMO products, are engineered to be resistant to glyphosate or Roundup, which is the herbicide or weed killer that's used. 
and they found that tests were done in uh, Mississippi away from the fields and 75 percent of the air and water that was tested was positive for glyphosate or Roundup, which is banned, by the way, in Denmark and Sri Lanka and crosses the placenta to affect the fetus. Uh, and the World Health Organization has also called it a probable carcinogen and it has been related to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The Campbell Soup Company has decided to voluntarily label their cans if they have GMO ingredients, which could be a good thing, unless it's just a sacrifice to show that somebody will voluntarily label their GMO ingredients, which they haven't done for 20 years since they've been out. And that's what the bill that Senator Roberts is trying to push is really trying to uh, start or not label things at all, really. Also, they're trying to use a QR technology to detect a um, barcode on genetically modified foods, and you'd have to detect it and sign in and all, do all the other things with it instead of plain labeling, which obviously is the right thing to do. Anyway, if you're enraged about this, which I think you should be, especially if you're one of the nine out of 10 people that want genetically modified foods to be labeled, call your senator as soon as possible you have two senators. The phone number is 202-224-3121. And see if you can stop this travesty. This is Dr. Conrad Miller signing out. Remember, call your senators, 202-224-3121. Stop the Dark Act, which we have dubbed Deny Americans the Right to Know Act.